Welcome back. This time we're going to be going through how to configure and install and configure uh, MediaWiki on the Nginx web server we set up last time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the download button here and we're going to copy this URL and we're going to grab it. And we're going to place it into our website zone that we created earlier. So a couple of things about MediaWiki to note is that the configuration is very awkward, like it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> I'm not really sure what they were thinking when they decided to create some of the things they did. Uh, I can say that I like the fact that it uses a database, which is why I'm using it as opposed to DokuWiki. Otherwise, I'd recommend DokuWiki as it is much easier to set up. So. Okay, that gives us all our files, and we just need the chmod, all of them, 2755. Okay, so now if we go back to here, we'll see that we have this right here, which takes us to the MediaWiki webpage, which doesn't really help us set it up at all, because there's no local settings.php file, and it took me a long time to figure out how to get that, uh, mostly because it's, who wouldn't know to go to mw-config, slash index, right? I mean, that seems like it would be obvious to go to. So here's where we're going to go, and this is actually going to walk us through creating a configuration file which we need for the site. And it's also going to set up all of the stuff. This page right here has a couple of different things where it says uh, various libraries that are required for certain features. Uh, if you followed my previous uh, Nginx guide, and you installed the image library, the APC cache, and the uh, Unicode extension, um, then you should be all set here. Otherwise it may tell you that, well, you're missing some features and it may not function as intended. So, it's not required though. So now we're going to set up our database. If you follow the last one, we created a database called mwiki. And we created mwiki as a user as well. And our ever so secure password of password. Uh, again, I don't recommend that. We'll use UTF-8 and name of the wiki, Sitebook. Now, when you put your name here, this is actually your username, not just your name. So if you put like a first and last name with a space, um, you're going to need to enter a space every time you're going to log in. Just a forewarning, I found that a little weird. So I'm not used to systems that allow spaces for logins. It's not to say it's a bad thing, it's just unusual. So now that we sent this, we have an Ask Me More Questions page, and this will go through a bunch of additional information. So for example, we can actually make it a private wiki. Um, we have a checkbox in here someplace, I believe. Oh, here we go, right there. We can make it a private wiki or a traditional, whichever you want. I'm going to leave it as is. Um, and you can also go through the configuration process for APC if you want. I'm not worried about it. It's not very important to me. So when you click this, this is going to go through and it's going to set up all the database information that we need in our system. So it's going to go through and it's going to create everything for us. All right? And then, once we've done that, it's going to download this local settings file for us. So we're going to have to grab that, we're going to have to put that onto our server. Um, unfortunately, that either means using SSH or SFTP. So fortunately, I have SFTP, so I don't have to worry about it. VI local settings. This is case sensitive. So. Now, if you do the default configuration, you're going to want to check to see that the script path is in fact set to empty, because if it's not, that can create a problem. I'm also going to show you how to create short paths for clean URLs. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit, and we're going to add WG article path. We're going to set that to sign one which is effectively any content. We're going to do WG use path info to true. Okay. Now, if this is set to something, usually it's the full path to your location for scripts, or at least it was when I configured it. That can cause all kinds of problems. Just a heads up for you. So you want to set it to an empty string. All right, so now, if we go back to the same location before, oh, it's not going to take us anywhere. We haven't, con we haven't configured Nginx, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to actually have, for the clean URLs, all of the content redirect to index.php automatically. 
but we also don't want static content doing that. So we have a check to see if the file exists, if it's not like an extended path, um, then don't redirect it. So static content will be delivered without any changes. Right here, and we're going to add this right underneath here. Test it and restart it. Same as before. And with this add on, we should be able to access our wiki now. And there it is. Here is our media wiki page. So we now have access to it. Now, the next step that I'm going to keep walking through is uh, securing it with HTTPS. We're going to actually create a folder inside of Nginx right here, and we're going to create the uh, certs folder so we can put more certs in there later so like you know if you wanted to create other stuff whoops all right so we need to do uh, this naming is doesn't really matter it's semantic because the naming that does matter comes later on um, we need to run this as sudo okay it's gonna ask us for some information we're gonna enter it as truthfully as possible and you could fill it with other garbage and it wouldn't really matter Except for the FQDN, the fully qualified domain name. What you want to do is you want to do an asterisk, then dot, say book, dot book, and this will match all subdomains. If you don't use an asterisk, you have to use an actual prefix, uh, or you can just leave it without one, or you can do a space and then a second, okay, second domain. So you can add more than one. Um, this is usually good enough for the development purposes. So. Okay, so now we have a couple of files in here, but we want to actually secure those by changing their permissions to 600. And now nobody else can access them, and that's good. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to go to our configuration for this, and we want to add all of this garbage right here. This is effectively setting up a whole new server line, so it's going to listen on port 443 for SSL connections. We're using SSL v3 and TLS, and we specify the locations of both of the certs. So, same as before, we still have the server name, and we still have all the configuration for this stuff, um, except we won't be using the uh, fav icon fix. That's unrelated to this. Um, I forgot to add that to the other guide, so don't worry about it. Um, so let's add that real quick. And we're going to add that below here. Okay, we just need to change anything with Devinit, Moke, because the locations are not the same. <clears throat> now, a couple of things to point out is that. Uh, it has a whole bunch of different ciphers here. Uh, the default is just high, not in all, and MD5. Uh, the recommended was RC4 as a prefix. Uh, there are optimizations we're going to add as well for the keep alive, and that's so that it doesn't have to perform a handshake every time because the handshakes can be expensive on processor cycles. So we're going to go and we're going to edit the actual main configuration. We haven't done this yet because the main configuration is pretty much all set. Like everything in it is pretty solid, except it doesn't have SSL by default. So we're going to add two lines to that right here, which will cache current connections, and it will allow us to improve performance by not having to do a handshake on every operation. So, like every time a page is reloaded, the user is constantly going throughout the site. All right, so with that addition right there, we should be set to test again. Now there is a couple of other things to point out. If you wanted to, you can actually remove the HTTP access, the port 80 listen. You could also do this right here where you take any attempts to get to the regular port 80 and you redirect them to the HTTPS version of the site. And this is usually an ideal approach because it makes sure that even if they don't type in HTTPS, it takes them to the right place. So, uh, or you could leave both alone and that's what I'm gonna do because I don't really, don't really mind it. Um, I'm not worried about it right now because, again, this is just a test, test site. 
So we have a restart here, and now if we go to this again, it's still going to load, except now if we go to HTTPS colon slash slash, it's going to ask us if we want to trust the certificate, and that's because it's a self-signed certificate. You need to go to your trust section, and oops, you can choose to trust it or not in some browsers. Not all browsers have that. A little, a little tricky. Um, Chrome will just ask you if you want to continue anyway. And there is one other problem that we're going to encounter, and I'm going to show you that right now. So you'll notice that it's not really taking me to HTTPS. See how it's still HTTP? So, and the reason that is, is because this site and all services like it usually have a variable that you have to update, and that's going to be in our local configuration here. So, local config. And what it did when we created the site is it took our access and it said that, okay, you're at HTTP, right? And that means that all of the resources, so the CSS, the JavaScript, images, etc., are all using HTTP to get to the site. And with the mixed content, this will create problems in certain browsers. Chrome threw an absolute tantrum. It couldn't load half the page because it couldn't load the CSS because it wasn't secure. So we're going to change that to HTTPS, and all of the content will load as HTTPS by default. And now, if we type in HTTPS colon slash slash, we are now HTTPS connected, and we're all set. So that's how we secure it. Pretty easy, right? <laughs> all right, so the one last thing I wanted to cover is actually there's a way to enhance MediaWiki. Surprise! Uh, they have extensions, and for me, almost every bit of my documentation is done in Markdown. Uh, I find it to be extremely clean and easy to do regularly as you're going through a process. Um, and this was the only working, there are three different named Markdown extensions, like state, stating that they do add Markdown functionality. This is the only one I've gotten to work, because the other two were for older versions or were in beta. So, to install this, you just download their package, you may have to download Markdown Extra from another website and put it in the same folder. You add this line to the bottom of your local settings configuration, and then you just surround your Markdown code with tags like this. And that's all set. So I'm not going to go through that configuration. I figure it's just something to mention in my written guide. Um, uh, but that really concludes my tutorial. I hope it was helpful.